Sports. Well, DeAndre Ayton has signed or at least agreed to a four-year, $133 million maximum offer sheet with the Indiana Pacers. So that's great. A lot of stuff going on when it comes to this. Again, according to Woj, this sheet has not been signed yet. I'm hearing about midnight, so got another five hours as of recording of this part. Pacers have already waived Dwayne Washington and will be moving on from three of the players acquired in the Celtics deal. And that would be Malik Fitz, Jawan Morgan, and Nick Stauskas, who were acquired again in the Malcolm Brogdon trade. So I'm going to keep our ear to the ground here. And of course, we'll follow up once we know whether or not Phoenix is going to match this offer sheet or if a sign and trade is involved. But until then, check out Sean and I's original thoughts on this whole Aiton to Indiana thing while I continue to process what seems to be the immediate future of the Pacers franchise. Sports. But, you know, when you're talking about Jalen Smith, you talk about that chip on the shoulder, and it's a good point, and it's one of the reasons that I thought he was such a good signing is that we really haven't had a chance to see what he could do if given the opportunity to flourish. But then all of a sudden things break down in Phoenix between DeAndre Aiden and the front office. Uh, I will leave a link. Those of you who haven't heard our thoughts on all that, I'm not going to rehash it. We talked about it for 30 minutes. Go find that episode. <laughs> we'll talk about that. So for obviously for those who just want the very, the TLDR, Sean disagrees and very adamantly believes that Phoenix should make amends and go ahead and sign Aiton. I, for what it's worth, if that offer is still on the table, if Aiton is willing to come to the table, I too I'm on team. Just go ahead and sign DeAndre Ayton and add pieces and run it back. Uh, however, it does not seem that that is the route that things are going to go. And the Pacers, for some reason, continue to be the name that gets mentioned with Ayton. And I personally kind of hate it. Not because I don't love Ayton. Sean, you know that I, I love this man. I think the only... The only person who talks about sports uh, on the air that loves Aiden more than me is probably you. Um, <laughs> so we're, you're talking to a couple of Aiden stands here, but I feel like the Pacers are just going to put Jalen Smith in the exact same position he was in, and I I just I don't know I don't know that spending all that money on Aiden if I'm the Pacers is worth it. Like to me for Phoenix, it's worth it. Cause you're right there. You went to the finals two years ago. You very likely without injury would have been there again this year. And, or at least in the Western conference finals. So them spending the money on eight and makes sense. The Pacers are two years away at best. And I just don't know that it makes sense to max a guy like Aiden when you have three first round picks and what's looked to be potentially a generational draft coming in 2023. I would almost prefer the Pacers to be bad than to add eight and be a guaranteed seven seed for the next three years. But Sean, am I crazy? No, not at all. I mean, that's, that makes a lot of sense. I, I hate to agree with you because I feel like, like you were saying, we've kind of been agreeing a lot, but <laughs> these are all things you can't really, I mean, it's, it's all makes sense. You know what I'm saying? There's really no, I'd be bullshitting you if I tried to argue against it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'd be just arguing against it for the sake of arguing. Like, it's just, I can't do that. Especially regarding these topics. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's... Oh, I don't know. Like, <laughs> it, it'd be hard. I can only imagine it being in your shoes and having... Knowing that you could be getting someone like Aiden, but also how you're torn. Like, if I had, had Jalen Smith right now on my squad... And I was hearing rumors as well. I probably feel the same way. Because I have something here. Quite frankly, it's a lot cheaper than signing someone like DeAndre Ayton. It gives me time to see what I have with this guy. If for some reason, you know, we play him for a couple of years and he turns out to stink it up. Okay, I didn't spend a lot of money on him. And, you know, I can ship his ass on somewhere else if I need to. 
and then I can you know get someone like a DeAndre Ayton or caliber that type of player a couple of years from now, or might get lucky and get one on the draft. You know what I'm saying? I know, mean, like you were saying, draft coming up is supposed to be pretty good. Might be able to get some stud in there. Like you know, it makes sense. Like I don't blame you for uh, feeling like you want to stay away from that because yeah, I probably feel the same way. But at this current moment in time, I'm over here hoping to God they can make amends and, and resign this man in Phoenix because if not, all hell is going to break loose in, in the Suns fan country, I can tell you that. Because, I mean, dudes, dudes aren't happy, man. Like, they should have signed this man a year ago. Like, they dicked off, they, they put it off, they didn't sign him. You know, and I've heard that uh, a lot of it has to do, they, just, they feel like they can get someone of his caliber elsewhere. They don't need to pay that kind of money. They don't need to pay him max money. They can get his contributions elsewhere for cheap. So I'm like, well, you want to be a cheap buck and, you know, and try to try to do that. That's cool. But I really don't think it's going to work out. Like I said, if, if Aiden goes, people are going to be disappointed. But Suns aren't going to have the same kind of success they've had the last couple of years. Like, it's just not. Like, he's, he's going to attribute a lot more than than the organization at this point, it seems, wants to give him credit for it. Like, I don't. I don't see how you cannot give him a good bulk of, bulk of the credit. Yeah, Chris Paul came in and shaped things for sure. I'll give you that. But people fail to, fail to remember, you know, the Suns were on the rise before Chris Paul. Like, that, but undefeated in the bubble with Ricky fucking Rubio, my dude. Like, you know, Chris Paul didn't do it all by himself. Like, Aiden at that point was starting to really come into his own. Like, he was developing hardcore and becoming the kind of player we need to have to become. You know, like, during that time, I really think that time off during COVID, that motherfucker was in the gym getting it. Like, you can't convince me otherwise, because when the bubble rolled around, them boys was about it. You know what I'm saying? So, Aiden was coming out looking like a perennial all-star when they were playing in the bubble. Booker was on fire, as I had expected. You know what I'm saying? So, them boys were playing on top-notch basketball. So, I mean, I feel like they were... You know, I feel like Chris Paul gets a little too much credit. You know, I'll be honest with you. I think he does. You know, yeah, he's been a big, big help. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to take anything away from that dude. But, you know, got to give credit when credit's due, man. Aiden's held down that five spot. You know, exceeded expectations, in my opinion. And to turn, you know, to turn down signing him to a max contract just plain silly to me, man. I don't get it. I, don't, I will never get it. And like I told you, my my fandom is in the witness, you know, in the Raptors right now, just kind of hanging by a hanging <laughs> by a thread, dude. Because I'll tell you what, man, if they they let this man go for practice, especially some goofy shit, whether it's Kevin Durant or a fucking draft pick or whatever, Miles Turner, <laughs> yeah, Miles Miles Turner, and you know who that, who's that one dude y'all got? Not a Brogdon. They, you guys got rid of Brogdon. They want what, it? Buddy Heald? Was it McCon- McConaughey? Oh, T.J. McConnell. McConnell? Y'all want T.J. McConnell? Yeah, y'all still got that, dude? I believe so. Yeah, y'all keep him. We don't want that, dude. We can send you so Rubio we, back, though. We can send you nah. We can send you Miles Turner and Ricky Rubio. I want either one of them dudes. Uh, not for DeAndre, bro. That's for sure. <laughs> but uh, and it sounds like you don't want to either, so we're in the same boat. But uh, yeah, well, we'll see what happens, man. I'm sure whenever, whenever, I can almost guarantee you, whenever something does happen and there's news to be said about it, you, you as listeners can guarantee you're gonna hear me and Kat talk about it because we'll definitely, definitely have something to say. And there you have it, folks. There are a few more hours before Aiton could sign this bad boy. And then we will have 48 hours of waiting and speculation as we see if the Suns are going to match this offer sheet or not. I don't believe that they will, but let me know what you think. Uh, The Suns have had multiple opportunities to uh, sign Aiden if they thought he was a max guy up until this point, and they have not done so as of yet, but maybe... They are just too damn afraid of getting nothing in return for a former number one pick. And 
I couldn't necessarily blame them. I'm sure you couldn't either. But hey, again, let me know what you think. And once this thing has all settled, we'll be here to discuss it again. See you next time. 